Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. In today's vlog I'm going to be taking the Adria Matrix motorhome to a Weybridge. Now you may remember when we had our caravan we took that to a Weybridge. If you haven't seen that vlog I'll put a link in the description. It's really quite insightful because in that vlog I showed you the contents of the caravan. Uh, we were quite convinced that we would be under our weight. We went off to a Weybridge we were actually over only slightly about 50 kilos but we were still over so in this vlog what i'm going to do is i'm going to explain to you about weights with the motorhome why it's important and also a legality to be within your weights um i'm going to show you where you will find your motorhome weight i'm going to show you exactly what we've got in the matrix um before we set off on a trip and so you can see what we've got and then we'll head off to a Weybridge and hopefully we will be under. So your motorhome will have um, basically a maximum authorised mass. That is the maximum your motorhome can weigh. Many motorhomes are three and a half tonnes. You can drive your three and a half tonne motorhome on your normal car licence. This motorhome is uh, 3,650 kilos. So that's 3.65 tonnes. So it's a little bit more. Um, to drive this motorhome you have to have the C1 category on your driver's license. Now it is important because if you are driving a three and a half ton motorhome with no C1 category on your license, just on your B category, and your motorhome is actually heavier than three and a half tons, you're technically driving otherwise in accordance with your driver's license and, and you're not insured. So these things are really important and I know I do sometimes go on about safety, but it's a big thing. Obviously, if you've got your C1 category and your three and a half ton motorhome weighed over three and a half tons, you do have a license to drive it, but you're over the weight limit of your vehicle, which is a separate offence. So it's important that we get this right. So as I say, find out the maximum authorised mass of your motorhome. You'll also, with a motorhome, have a mass in running order that figure is a lower figure and that's basically what your motorhome should weigh when it comes out of the factory and arrives at your dealership now what you've got to take into account with mass in running order or sometimes it's just uh, mro um, is when the manufacturer uh, weighs its prototype motorhome it doesn't include extras that you might put on it and Within that though, they do allow for a certain number of things. So within that, they've generally accounted for a driver weighing at between 70 and 75 kilos, depending on the manufacturer. They've allowed for some water in your water tank and some fuel, diesel or petrol, depending on your vehicle, in the petrol or diesel tank. So you need to check with your manufacturer what they're including. So let's say for example with Adria we've got the driver, we've got a certain amount of fuel, we've got a certain amount of, amount of gas um, and water. So when you get your vehicle you would like to think it's going to weigh the MIRO but chances are it won't, don't take it for granted because you're going to work out your payload from your mass in running order if that makes sense. So this motorhome, I'll talk about mine because obviously I, I know about that, the maximum this can weigh is 3,650 uh, 3, kilos. It's meant to have on paper a payload of 580 kilos, which is a really good payload. However, what that doesn't take into account for is that the person that bought this from you, they put two 100 watt solar panels on the roof. They put an air conditioning unit on the roof. There's an aerial on the roof. There's a Wi-Fi system on the roof there's a bike rack on the back. So I would say I could quite easily have lost 80 kilos easily just on those, maybe even more. So that's already taken me down to somewhere near maybe 500 kilos I've got left. So it's the same for you. When you buy a motorhome, these things that you add on, you're taking straight away from your payload. So what I want to do is take this to the Weybridge and find out how near we are to 3650. If the worst happens and you go off to a Weybridge and you are over, most motorhomes you can up plate them. And you may have heard of that term. Basically, um, it means that you apply for your motorhome to be up plated to a higher weight because this motorhome's on a Fiat cabin chassis. It's got a limit as the chassis. 
and you cannot plate your motorhome basically as much as your chassis will take. The reason motorhomes are often three and a half tons is because it opens it up for more people with just the B category to be able to buy one and drive one and also for taxation class because a DVLA uh, class three and a half ton different to the over uh, three and a half tons so so that's sort of a bit of a technicality I won't bore you with it but that's basically it so if the worst happens and you are over like if we found out we were over we've got a problem we've got to start taking things out but you could up plate I won't talk about that now about how to do it because you could ask your dealer or there is a really reputable company that does it but that could be for a different vlog at some point right so what we'll do is I'm just going to show you first of all where to find the weight plate in your motorhome um, it's not a secret I'm just going to show you that and then we'll dive back in and we'll do what's in my cupboards because we all like a look I'm going, to I'm going to show you my secret cubby hole as well it's where I hide my contraband so I'll show you that um, and also it's interesting to know when you go to the motor to the Weybridge, which we're doing, um, you're ask them to weigh your front axle and your rear axle. So not just your gross weight, your front and rear, because you've got two separate weights on what the front can carry and the rear can carry. And again, you must not overladen your axle. So if you've got a garage, like we've got a massive garage, and you start piling stuff in there, and you end up with too much weight on that axle, it's a no you you are again over that actual weight so that's important to get your axle weights weigh bridges themselves um i'm going to a local one it's costing me 20 pounds to have the full weight and the axles um it's not a trading standards one before i went to trading standards they are really accurate i think i think at the time when i researched it there's something within 20 kilograms accurate um the one i'm going to the accuracy generally with the weigh bridge I would aim for around 50 kilograms so when you're talking about a caravan it's a little bit tighter but with a motorhome 50 is is still an amount where it gives you a good indication of where you should be but weigh bridges they are very accurate they're designed to weigh yes massive vehicles but equally they're, they're there to weigh loads so they are accurate don't just think oh well it, it might be this might no go with what it's telling you play it safe always play it safe this is my fiat this is a fiat engine um, this model is 2020 if you're wondering where to find your weight plate it should look like this and you should find it under the bonnet some motorhomes do have them actually on the uh, side of the motorhome but this one doesn't under the fiat bonnet i've just covered over some of the um, important numbers for this motorhome but basically this is the original plate for the fiat and this is the plate from adria the manufacturer's plate so on the manufacturer's plate this top number 3650 that is the maximum weight this motorhome can weigh this number number one 1850 this is the maximum weight my front axle can take and number two 2000 kilos that's the maximum my rear axle weighs so when we go on the weigh bridge we need to be under this number we need to be under this number on the front axle and this number on the rear axle let's go back into the motorhome and see exactly what i've got on board before we hit the weigh bridge coming in this is your your first proper little nosy round and we all we all love a good nosy don't we right i am going to start here in this corner and work my way around so i have got in this cupboard i've literally got so there's some sponges there's some manuals for the adria and there's a bag of tea bags that is all i've got in that cupboard in my next that isn't a cupboard that just throws you off that's for the drop down bed in this cupboard i've got some really important supplies i've got some breakfast cereal i've got some pringles i've got some ketchup i've nothing in that cupboard i don't think i've put anything in these no these are empty as well i do travel light i've, I've told you this before i travel really light and and i do so there's nothing in there the fridge i haven't put any food in the fridges yet but when i do it'll be milk uh, some salad stuff because i do eat salad um so there'll be a few kilos to go in there now this cupboard up here this is where i've got an aftex television and that's the uh the wi-fi connection in there so i've just got a little aftex in there coming back here now in the drawers i've got just a few bits there oven tray tin foil you're going to laugh at this well some of you aren't you'll be disgusted i've got some cutlery i've got my plastic knives and forks 
don't ask but I, I, I quite like to keep my weight down and again I've got literally plastic cups We're, this is our first trip this weekend so I've, they're all still wrapped up these are cheap as chips from Asda um, but they're really light and they don't break and then under the oven I've just got um, some spray kitchen roll a couple of mugs that's pure clean there so that's in that cupboard down here on the floor that there is my hose pipe for the fresh water I haven't put that in my um, garage box as yet because I haven't uh, gone in there since I put that in so I'll bob that in later so that's what that is it's the hose pipe for the fresh water and then coming back now this this is my secret cupboard I know it's exciting it's very exciting right I've just got coke in there and Pepsi Max if you wanted to put something else in you could so drinks under the bed I've just got two bottles of water as you can see and a spare mains cable I do have two cables that's just a spare one because you never know this little drawer that's just uh, a little clothing cupboard I don't know if you can see in there clothing in there and then I'll whiz round here so into the bedroom now this is my wardrobe this is clothing just for a couple of days there so there's obviously just uh, fleeces and bits and pieces this little cupboard I've got our towels now I've probably told you before about body rag those are the body rag towels they are brilliant there's my my little tracksuit that's like um that's like my little pajama outfit for the motorhome so if you see me trotting around site to the showers in that you know what it is it's my little my little pajama outfit um right and then over on this side in this one we've got literally a spare cushion there that actually goes um as a headrest mm. in the um lounge and then up here we've got more clothes and then i'll show you the bathroom oh and bedding i've got uh, pillows sheets duvet uh, obviously i know there's not a lot of clothing this is literally like stuff for a couple of days so if you're going away for longer your clothes are going away more bathroom we'll dive in here so this is the bathroom space so in here i've got my little toothbrushes brand new because um i've not been anywhere yet under here i've just got some toiletries a hand towel nothing in that side so you can make a comparison obviously to how much stuff you take and in this cupboard i've not really got anything yet and in this cupboard i've just got a few bits in there just last shot before um we set off i will be throwing as i say the food in and i will be throwing in um a few more toiletries like my hairbrush my perfume bit of makeup and that that will be it um so that is everything that we're going to have internally in the motorhome i'll put you down now because i'm going to have to go and open the garage door and i'll show you into the garage and what we're carrying there so give me a minute and uh, i'll see you in there super as if by magic i've um i've opened the garage door now this is the off side of the motorhome it's got the same door on the near side um interestingly enough this motorhome has got all i don't know if you can see there let me turn you around all these fiama locks uh it's got an external gas barbecue point as well that was fitted as an extra but it's got all these fiama locks these are absolutely brilliant I've got one on the habitation door. Well, I haven't. The, the chap that had this before from new, he had it fitted on the habitation door and both the garage doors. These are a really good uh, extra bit of security. Um, so, as I say, this is the off side. So what we'll do is we'll just have a look in here. So, first of all, I've got the large Malenko levelling ramps. These, again, are absolutely brilliant. If you're looking at levellers, Malenko's brilliant. Um, I've got two, don't you see there, two Isabella chairs. There is also an Isabella table. Um, I think it's just, I don't know if you can see through the little gap. It's through there. I won't open the other side of the garage because I've nothing else over there to show you at the moment. But chairs, table. There are some carpets um, in here that go, are part of the habitation carpets. Now, this is my motorhome box. Since I started motorhoming, I know I waffle on. You just want to see me get to the Weybridge. I know, I know. Since I started motorhoming, I bought a box. It's this box. 
um, I don't know if it was like uh, home base I think really it was I don't know 20 25 I don't know 20 pounds um, and it's huge and it is so robust and to keep all your bits in so when you arrive at site this is where your hose should be your electric cable toilet chemicals you know everything you're going to need is just really accessible when you arrive on site so I'm digressing um, just lift this up so in there I've got a spanner set a teppanyaki some rock pegs some crocs some toilet chemicals um, and let another electric hookup cable I've got um, a hand that's a collapse portable shower so there's there are quite a few sort of just generally bitsy things in there i would estimate that box probably weighs a good 20 i'm just trying to close it i'm sorry a good 22 20 20 yeah probably a good 20 kilos easily so that that is the contents of the garage there um when we get some bikes we're getting some e-bikes all being well we will hopefully put them in the other side of the garage over there or if not they'll go on the bike rack as i said we have a bike rack which is here on the back what i'll do is i'll just show you our gas as well so this is a safe fill canister you can see there that's a 10 kilo gas canister that 10 kilo bottle when full actually weighs 15 kilos it takes 10 kilos of gas or lpg gas um and it weighs five kilos empty i know that because i did it so that full will be an extra 15 kilos right so you know how much the motorhome should weigh no more than 3650 once we get to the weigh bridge we will get our total weight and our front and rear axle i am going to the weigh bridge with no water in the fresh water tank that water tank will take 140 liters of fresh water each liter weighs a kilo so I know that however much water I put in, which I can tell from my control panel, I know how much weight to add uh, to the actual number. I'll explain that later once we've got our weight. I know I've currently got half a tank of fuel. The toilet cassette is empty. The wastewater tank is empty. So we are going up to the way bridge. Now we'll have to get out on the way, you know, out of the vehicle when it's on the way bridge. So we won't have our weight. So once I get the total figure, I've got to add Jules, who's 120 kilograms. It'll kill me if you're telling you. I've got to add me. I think I'm just under nine stone. So I'm 50 something kilos, maybe 50. I don't know. Let's say 60 kilos. I, I don't know. That, but I don't know. I'm just under nine stone anyway. So me and Jules. So let's say we've got to add that. However much fresh water we were taking, we've got to add that. The food that will be in our fridge we'd have to add that so it's going to be interesting to see where we're going to be at so let us now set off to the Weybridge, get some footage of us on the Weybridge, obviously so you can see the motorhome actually there and then i'll uh, i'll give you the good or bad news so yeah see you at the Weybridge. exciting news I made it to the Weybridge and I've got our facts and figures here so this Weybridge was a little bit different to the one we used before in Somerset which is a trading standards one um, we drove on to this one Jules and I could remain in the motorhome so that made that a lot easier um, so we drove on uh, we did uh, rear axle front axle total weight drove off and we got our bit of paper which cost us 20 pounds so what do we need to know? Well, drum roll. As I told you, our maximum weight could have been 3,650 kilos. The only thing we were missing is basically water and e-bikes, if we were to take e-bikes. We weighed 
3,500 kilos. So we weighed three and a half tons and I showed you exactly what we'd got. So that leaves us now with a payload of 150 kilos. That would literally for us now be either a full water tank because it's 140 litres, which is 140 kilos, or it could be, uh, say, 70 kilos of water, of water so 70 litres, so half a tank and our e-bike. So we are literally at the limit there once we put those items in. If we wanted to take passengers, because this is a four berth, you might want to take people in yours. We've only got 150 kilos to play with. And that would then include passengers and water. So it's interesting how close you can, you know, suddenly be to that limit. I'm not surprised. I did, I did think when Jules, I thought without Jules and I, we were going to be about 3,300 kilos. So if you added Jules and I, to be fair, yeah, we'd have been at about 3,480 um, and we were, were at 3,500. So I wasn't far off. What am I going to do about that? two things i can either one be really careful and just make sure that i don't put too much water in i take on board how much diesel i've got in my tank and i'm just careful about what else i put in the motorhome now or i can think about up plating or up rating the weight on the motorhome this motorhome we could take it up to four tons four thousand kilos that would give us then from our three and a half where we're weighing right now an extra 500. To do that, I would have to um, get a company to do the paperwork side and to stay within our axle limits, I would have to um, improve or upgrade the suspension on the motorhome because I told you about getting the axles weighed. Our front axle is well under, well, well under, hundreds of kilos under, so that's fine. The rear axle, I told you when we looked at the plate, it'll take 2,000 kilos with our rear axle. We are currently weighing at 1,880 kilos on our rear. So I've got 120 kilos left that I can put over that rear axle. I've got to think my water tank's over that rear axle, and if I put bikes on, it's over that rear axle. So I'm going to have to really be careful about that axle. If I was to um, up plate or uprate the motorhome, that rear axle will also have to be uprated to take more than 2000 kilos. And to do that, you would have to, I think, I think put um, air suspension on the rear. But I don't know until I do some research into this. Um, so maybe this is something that you and I can learn a lot more about. I'm going to speak to John because it's John's motorhome and I'm going to ask him what he thinks is the best way forward because John can do um, suspension upgrades. He can't obviously, he doesn't do the actual paperwork side. There's certain companies that do paperwork for the up plating or up rating, um, but I can do that through him and he can certainly do something with our suspension to get our weight up to 4,000 kilos on this motorhome. I'm going to end it there so we know that I am under but I'm very close and I hope this vlog has has been of interest to you I know it has gone a little bit waffly um, because there's a lot to talk about with weights I know you just wanted to know well what do you weigh over or under yeah that that's great that's the fun side but the legal side and the safety side is really important um, I would say say to you please if if you can take your motorhome to a Weybridge, just out of absolute interest for yourselves. And if you do, in the comments on this vlog, please tell me how you got on, because it'd be interesting to see how how your motorhomes compare to this one, to mine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of an eye opener, but I'm really glad I'm under, otherwise I'd have had a really big problem. So there we go. Um, Hopefully that's been of some interest to you. It opens up a little bit more of a what do we do now um, and we'll we'll maybe explore that together, you and me. I'm going to end it there. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.